children. The freedom movement of India is speckled with lots of great events. Events that inspire us even today. The kinds of situations that prevailed then. Maybe the division of Bengal or the Rowlett Act that was brought into force by the British government or maybe the Jalian Walla Bagi incident, the Chauri Chaura incident. Our history is speckled with a lot of such colorful events. We are arriving at another most important happening in the Indian independence movement. In 1930, 1930, Congress Working Committee held a meeting at Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad. Top leaders of Congress who were in the Working Committee, they all had assembled and there dissatisfied at the kind of response India was getting from the British they decided to go on with a new weapon that is the civil disobedience movement civil disobedience we will not obey the rules and regulations of the British government. They don't have a right to rule us. We will discard them into the dustbin. And a lot of steps were taken. Civil disobedience movement has to be further continued. Because it put the British in an highly disturbing spot. They are not able to maintain their cool at all. Administration used to just get confused. They cannot have an absolute control on the people, on the local leaders. The British will have a very tough situation to face. Now they decided the entire civil disobedience movement should be put under Gandhiji. Gandhiji is the right leader to give the needed directions. On one side, he should not turn violent. On the other side, in a non-violent way, we should create all hurdles and barriers in the path of Indian administration. They should find it very difficult to administer India, control India. So far as you don't go, don't become violent, they will not be able to fire, fire on you. The entire world community will stand against them. Very peaceful moment, but at the same time, very disturbing situation. So they decided to put the civil disobedience movement under the control of Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi, Gandhiji, wrote a letter to the Viceroy putting 11 conditions. He said, these are the 11 most irritating aspects to the Indian freedom fighters. We are not happy with you. Set these things right. If it goes otherwise, we will be, we'll be forced to come down with an absolute civil disobedience in the entire country. So 11 points were formulated. If the demands are not accepted, then people would stop paying taxes. This is the key part. If taxes are not paid, the British cannot run their government. There will be total disobedience on the part of the people with regard to the government. Viceroy 
outright rejection outrightly he rejected the 11 demands put forth by mahatma gandhi ji they too did not have any other go they had to reject so that was expected so now the civil disobedience movement has to go on on a large scale with a different perspective with a different perspective so he decided that a salt march has to be taken up to dandi dandi is on the sea beach arabian sea beach in gujarat the march will start from ahmedabad sabarmati ashram they will come to dandi now the entire distance is 375 kilometers 375 kilometers and gandhi ji would cover the distance by walk what will he do he will come all the way with the fellow congressmen patriots people the rural community all those who want to support gandhi ji they join and in a big procession they will come down to dandi arrive on the sea beach and there symbolically gandhi ji will lift a fistful of salt breaking the british law see i said symbolic what does symbolic mean illegally the british were levying different kinds of taxes on indians variety of taxes for everything there was tax what right do they have coming from europe to levy taxes on india indian people and this is salt being made from the salt water salt water is there plenty of salt water in the seas from that the poor people make salt what they require even for making salt you have to pay tax to the british government how is it justified salt is a commodity which is used by everyone not only by the rich class and the poor people get affected by that so the entire program was charted out and on march 12th march 12th 1930 the dandi march started gandhi ji covered 375 kilometers by foot during this rally and procession charaka became a symbolic tool of indian unity indian fight against the british he stood as a symbol of the congress stood as the symbol of the common indians charaka what do we do with it charaka we use it to spin cloth to spin cloth so it is an instrument where you will not procure anything from the mills it's hand spun people manually make the clothes what they require cotton is converted into cloth see what a simple life it was then a simple life and the british wanted to take the cotton to britain and there get the clothes made and bring it back and in the name of the mill clothes sell it at a lower price at a lower price make money indians lose the labor the labor work which is involved in this entire process that gets devolved removed and indians become unemployed what can be done here in india There is no need to take it all the way to Europe, get it done there, and again bring it back here in ships. Lots of freedom fighters joined Gandhi Ji. It became a national movement. 
maybe the ultimately you take a fistful of salt it became symbolic of our entire freedom movement and it was unique in the world nowhere this had been tried so from april 6th to 13th national movement week was observed national movement week vijay lakshmi pandit kamala nehru patel sardar patel rajgopal acharya rajendra prasad and many many more congress leaders they were arrested and they were put in jail from karnataka to we had youth participating in dandi march of all of them the most important personality we see is mailara mahadevappa he was just a young boy of 18 or 19 years he goes all the way see the fervor in him he wanted to go and join gandhi ji in that march maila ramadeva is a big name as per the freedom study in karnataka is concerned he goes all the way to gujarat to participate in the dandi march karnataka congress organized salt march in karnataka too whatever happened in dandi it was not confined only to dandi such salt marches were held throughout the indian coastal belt in karnataka mainly it was in ankola a self movement a self movement salt movement was organized the people and r r divakar kaujalgi hanumanta hanuman raya gangadhar deshpande haldikar manjappa karnad sadashivappa they were all the key players in the salt satyagraha that was held in karnataka now this salt satyagraha brought about a national awakening the entire nation came to know what's happened people had a grouse against the british they were almost getting set to bigger and bigger adventures of this kind to throw the foreigners out of this land say it's all an evolutionary scheme you cannot say was it a success or failure success or failure no there's no question of success or failure you have a mission you are moving towards that mission ultimate mission and you have the great leadership of a humanitarian which the world had not seen till then leading the entire show so the final of the british administration here the final countdown had started had started some somebody may ask what happened with dandi march yes dandi march what happened but it brought about that national awakening everyone started discussing about it even in rural areas people were interested in knowing what is going on why should this be done how is it harmful to the nation why should we drive the british out of this country see people got the needed idea and the viewpoint with this we move on to the first round table conference see the british were totally disturbed the situation in 1929 and 1930 1930 dandi march 1929 and 30 if you try to sum up how was the nation as such the simon commission which had come to india had failed on the other side in 1929 congress in its session at lahore which was presided over by pandit jawarlal nehru 
gave the clarion call for Purna Swaraj, complete independence to India. Question of dominion status is set aside now. Total independence. Leave this country and go. We will govern ourselves. On the other side, Dandi March, it had an electric effect on the people of India. And the civil disobedience movement that took place in the country saw about 50,000 people in jails. British arrested around 50,000 people all over the country and threw them behind bars. 50,000 being arrested is not a small number. So things are happening. So at this situation, the British thought something has to be done from their end to nullify the situation, count on the situation and see that nothing untoward happens. They were afraid that these people may insist us, insist us for freedom till their last breath and fight and we may have to leave this country altogether. So they wanted to nullify, bring about some kind of silence make things go quiet. They wanted to put efforts in that direction. So the Indian legislative representatives, they all met in London in 1930. They met in London. Especially they wanted to discuss about their, the British said, we will discuss the dominion status aspect. India would be given such freedom that they can govern themselves but the ultimate control will rest with the British government. Understand well what is dominion status. Indian leaders can rule the country themselves but the ultimate control will rest with the British. That is dominion status. Next to dominion status is freedom. So in order to calm down those who were asking for total freedom the British chose an in-between path, a midway path. What's that? Dominion status. We will give you political powers. Rule your country yourselves. But at the helm of affairs, we will be there. We cannot give total independence now. You are not mature even to get total independence. This is how they try to cow things. Second one, we will give you a responsible government. What's a responsible government? Your people will be representatives and you will run your country. A responsible government. And we will provide for the religious representation. We will not give the representation in the assemblies of the central government only for a certain section. We will consider all sections and we will distribute the representation to all the different castes, groups, creeds and keep everyone happy. This is trying to make people go gullible, confusing the people. What is it you are asking? You are getting everything now. Whatever you had been asking other than complete Swaraj, Purna Swaraj, we are giving you everything. Why do you fight? Why do you continue fighting? So Congress leaders, they started releasing, releasing them from the jails to show consideration. So most of the leaders were released, but Indian National Congress was not happy. It knew that they are confusing Indians. Indian National Congress leader said, we won't participate. We will carry on with our mission. We will not participate in the first roundtable conference. Roundtable conference means all those who participate there, they have equitable right to discuss, argue and uh, debate. That's what means by roundtable conference. 
somebody is not governing it, we you all will be contributing to the discussions and we arrive at decisions. That's what we mean round table. When you sit around a round table, no one is important. Everyone is important. No? All those who sit around. So Indian National Congress did not participate in spite of freedom fighters being released from the jail. The British were not able to convince the Congress leaders. But the first independence struggle after the first independence struggle, the British government has come to a proposition where it is thinking of giving some more powers to the Indians now. How to go about? Gandhiji too had this in mind because it should not be a blockade ultimately. Neither the British speak nor the Indians speak, it becomes a blockade. Blockade means everything in a totally confused state where a headway progress won't be there. It won't continue further. So debate should be there. The British government and Gandhiji, they accepted to have discussion, a bilateral discussion. Irwin, the Viceroy of the British and Gandhiji will sit one to one and discuss over the Indian issues. That is called as Gandhi Irwin Pact. Gandhiji on one side, Irwin on the other side. He was then Viceroy. Gandhi Irwin Pact. The two will sit and discuss threadbare most of the problems that India is facing. Now, here in the first roundtable conference coming back, Gandhiji did not participate. Congress did not participate. So who participated then? Who are those who went to that conference? First round table conference. They were Ambedkar, Dr. Ambedkar, B.R. Ambedkar, Jaikar, he was a great leader then, Jaikar, Tej Bahadur Sapro, he was well known nationwide, Tej Bahadur Sapro, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, he was slowly, he was coming up as a leader of the Muslim community. Srinivas Shastri, some of the socialists and all, they went and participated in the first round table conference. Now on the other side, as the round table conference was failing, actually it had failed in it, because the most prominent party in India, Congress was absent there. Without Congress, how can discussion go on? At least 80-85% representation here, that is of the Congress. The public image too, that was getting formed by Congress. Most of the leaders were in Congress and they did not participate. They rejected outright. So Gandhi Irwin Pact, that gained more prominence now. It was a bilateral talk and in the Gandhi Irwin Pact, Congress accepted to withdraw the civil disobedience movement. Irwin actually prayed to Gandhiji to withdraw. Don't go ahead with the disobedience movement. Please get it withdrawn for the time being. Gandhiji accepts. Secondly, Gandhiji accepted to participate in the second round table conference. Now one more round table conference would be held and Congress leaders would participate in that. So the Gandhi Irwin discussions had a major outcome. Civil disobedience movement came to a halt. Peace prevailed for some time now. Secondly, Congress would participate in the second round table conference. So second round table conference, we will come to that. Now here, as the British had told, 
they came out with separate electoral constituencies for the untouchables. For the untouchables in the country. There were a big chunk in the population. Big chunk. Section. The British came out with separate electoral constituencies. Reserved constituency you speak of now. So special reserved constituencies for the untouchables. Asprishya. Those who are not touched by higher communities. Higher communities and these who are at the lower end, they don't mix with each other. Even they will give, get a lion's share in the representation. Now here, when this particular issue came up, there is a big fight between Ambedkar and Gandhiji. Ambedkar said, reservation means, it has a lot of meaning. The untouchables have, are significant. They have to be given representation. They have to be brought to the mainstream. And Gandhiji did not agree. Gandhiji said, all are Indians. Why should we divide like this? Let's educate them, bring them up, let them also participate. But this special reservation for this group, that group, this is not forthcoming. This is not going to work out from the interest of the country. This is divide and rule policy of the British. We should be, not become a party to it. From one angle you feel Ambedkar was right. From another angle you feel Gandhiji is right. Gandhiji did not want to divide the society. So this is an interesting aspect there. And the second round table conference ended without any conclusion. Mainly the two factions of Gandhiji and Ambedkar, they fought, verbally they fought, they did not agree with each other. Ideologically, there were a lot of difference between the two. Ideologically, in your principle thinking, the way you think it's, itself is on a different angle. The way Gandhiji thought and the way Ambedkar thought were divergent. They were moving in two different directions. How can they meet now? Unless they meet, there won't be agreement. This is where the second round table conference came to a close. Abruptly, without any decision. Now the British came out. This is the dirty business of the British. They came out with a communal award. Communal award. They divided the Indian society into different communes, communities and gave reservations to all of them. And said, we have done a big job. All the different communities of India, we have given reservations to them in the provincial assemblies and we have done a big job. We have rep representation for all. Actually, you see, they wanted to break Gandhi's back. They wanted to break this commoner becoming a great leader of the nation. So they did not go on the lines of Gandhiji and reservation for untouchables. Gandhiji absolutely opposes it. And when the communal award came out in 1932, Gandhiji said, I am going on fast. Fast unto death. Fast unto death. I don't accept it. I don't want my motherland to be divided into different sections. This is divide and rule policy of the British. I don't accept it, he said. All the people are equal for me. Everyone has to be attended. Reservations are not going to help. This is one way of breaking this country. Just look at the kind of reservations they had. The British in their communal award 
they came out with a reservation for the depressed class. They came out reservation for backward class, another group. They came out with a reservation for Sikhs, Sikh community. Reservation for Muslims. See, the seeds of a separate nation were sown by the British then. Separate reservation for the Muslims. For Indian Christians, separate division. Division. Separate reservation. Anglo Indians, a separate division. Those who are born to British father and Indian mother, their children, they had a reservation. They are called as Anglo Indians. Europeans in India, they had a special re reservation. Then landholders, for them a separate reservation. Landholders. Commerce and industry had a se separate reservation. Labor section in the country, industrial labor, farmers, they had a separate reservation. See how the British played a dirty game in the Indian soil only to hold on to power and earn wealth. Hold on to power and earn wealth. Okay, with this, the Pune Pact was signed by Congress. Pune Pact. A few reservations were made, few reservations were made and Congress stopped the dis civil disobedience movement absolutely after much of the reservations were all cut down and doors were opened for the third round table conference. What they could not achieve in the first and second they thought of getting achieved in the third round table conference. But Congress said, what is it? When you think on totally different lines, how can we agree? We boycott. We don't want to participate. Third round table conference was boycotted by the Congress. Again, the round table conference went on and there it was decided to have the Government of India Act proclaimed. It is called as 1935. So the platform was set to come out with Government of India Act 1935. What is great about this Act that we will discuss later, mainly giving a federal structure to governance in India. What is a federal structure? The nation is ruled at two levels. There will be a central government and there will be provincial governments. What we have now? Governance goes on at the state level. Karnataka is Karnataka government, Maharashtra is Maharashtra government, Tamil Nadu is Tamil Nadu, Kerala is Kerala government. But putting all these states together, you have the central government for states. The governance goes on at two levels. So regionally to everything gets attended by the provincial government. Keeping in view the security of the nation, consolidation of the country, you have the central government. It does its job. It works very well. Works very well. So the British thought of bringing a federal structure. And that needs a seal, no? Needed a seal. So they had the third round table conference. Third round table conference. Political rights are to be given to the Indians. Political rights are to be given to the Indians. Regional autonomy would be given at the state level. Regional autonomy at the state level. What is autonomy? Each region can rule on its own. That is autonomy. They will have their own government and they will rule themselves. Congress and Muslim League, they participated in the elections, in the elections were held. Though Congress had boycotted the third round table conference, when the elections were declared, Congress came forward to participate. Otherwise, they, they lose the control on participation itself. This had been learnt earlier too. 
and in the elections that took place in the country, Congress gained majority. So people had reposed their faith in Congress. They had reposed their faith in Congress. They had rallied behind the Congress. There was no doubt about it. They had confidence that this Congress will work well in achieving the goal, clearing the, our vision, achieving the goal, and Congress gained majority in the election. So central government, state government, provincial government, all these got formed. Most of the provincial governments went into the hands of the Congress. They had the majority. But it's all reservation again. Not absolute Congress majority. It's all reservation. At this time, 1935 we spoke of, 1936, and by 1939, the Second World War started. Second World War. The entire world shook with the attacks of Hitler on his neighboring countries. Hitler was very powerful. And Hitler was gaining popularity day by day. And he was getting the needed control on the entire Second World War. Everyone thought that British government would collapse, France, French government had already collapsed, Russia may collapse, and Hitler would take over. So everyone was anxious to know what is going to happen next. And British made another big mistake now. The Viceroy then, he made a decision and he declared that India would participate in the Second World War. Unilaterally he took a decision. He should have called Congress and other factions taken them into confidence instead of that as if India is absolutely under their hold the Viceroy decided and declared that India was a party to the war India joins the war in support of Britain but Congress walked out of the cabinet Congress said this is not agreeable Without we being asked, you declare and you say you are interested in our affairs. So Congress walked out of the cabinet without giving approval for countries' participation in the Second World War. Gandhiji went on Satyagraha, Satyagraha, assertion on truth against Viceroy's decision. Viceroy, you are wrong. Without asking us all, how did you take a decision? So Congress was totally unhappy about the way the British were governing India. Now comes quick India. Congress wanted to break the back, back of the British. On one side, the British had got forced to fight with Germany in Europe. And things were going to the worst there. On the other side, here in India, Gandhiji had given the call for quit India. British, you quit and go. Leave this country and go. At that time, Stratford Cripps. Stratford Cripps. A British executive statesman was sent to India a commission was established he was the head of the commission so it was known as Cripps Commission Stratford Cripps Commission they came to India they said we are coming to discuss with the Indians with the Congress and other factions about dominion status still it's not clear you can make out about dominion status, we want to discuss. We want a new constitution to be drafted for India. A new constitution 
if you are going to give dominion status, then you have to come out with your own constitution as to how you would rule your country. So, we will plan out for a new constitution. And states, Indian states, here there were states which were directly being ruled by the British. There were states which were under the queens and kings, kings and queens, and they were administering. But ultimately the British had the control. British had the control. So, but they were under the Indian kings. Now, they too would be given the liberty <coughs> to join the Indian dominion or stay separate. See, there too, the British did not help to keep our entire nation intact. They said, if kings desire to have their kingdom separate, free, we will endorse it. We don't have any problem. That's how when we got independence, there were 560 odd states in India <coughs> and Sardar Vallabhai Patel had to bring them all together under the Union of India. It was a big job. But the British were sowing the seeds of separation. They had sown it throughout. These proposals were opposed by Congress again. I said, what fun? You, all these are only to pull on, pull on and push the entire episode from year to year. They gave a call, quit India. When the Stratford Cripps proposals came to India and some of these decisions were to be taken, Congress was totally unhappy and they said, come on, quit India, enough is enough. British, quit and go. This land is not yours, quit and go. So Gandhiji gave another clarion call. This time it is fight to the finish. Fight to the finish. Do or die. You we will do it or we will die for our motherland, but we will not bow down our head. So Gandhiji took the ultimate decision of fighting the British down. So here, Gandhiji, Jawaharlal Nehru, Acharya Kripalani, Kasturba Gandhi, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Abul Kalam, Azad, they were all arrested for this clarion call of quit India. Who are you to say quit India? We have come here to govern. How can you ask us to go out? So all those people who raised their voice now, they were all put behind bars. Now a social fragment raised its hood in India. Mainly by Jay Prakash Narayan. JP, we call him JP. Even when Mrs. Indira Gandhi had declared emergency in the country, her foe within the country was Jay Prakash Narayan. Jay Prakash Narayan was unhappy about the way Indira Gandhi was controlling the Indian situation. In an election, Indira Gandhi had lost it, uh, had won the election, but she had won the election by corrupt means. The case was fought in the Supreme Court by her rival, Raj Narayan her rival candidate, Raj Narayan, and the court said, you have used corrupt means to win the election, step down, the court said. The court said, Indira Gandhi's election to the parliament is null and void. It's not legal. She has used corrupt means. But instead of resigning and stepping down, Indira Gandhi's declared emergency in the country. More than one lakh opposition leaders were put in behind bars, including Atil Bihari Vajpayee, L.K. Advani, Muraji Desai, Deve Gowda. Yeah, scores, scores of them. They were all put behind bars for having questioned Mrs. Indira Gandhi about her continuation as Prime Minister of the country. At that time, Jay Prakash Narayan, 
he led the opposition. He became a strong contender. He was not keeping well. He had undergo dialysis actually. And he fights. He too was put in jail. As he came out of the jail, he was in a very poor health, in very poor health. But elections got declared after 19 months. She had to declare elections. And she too felt that she would win the elections. Elections were declared in the country after 19 months emergency. And in those elections, Jay Prakash Narayan fought against Indira. In that war of ballots, Srimati Indira Gandhi lost bitterly. And the next Prime Minister was Uraji Desai of the opposition. All the opposition parties had come together to beat Srimati Indira Gandhi in the elections. That was then. Now here, when it was said that the British had to leave the country, there was an uproar asking the British to leave the country. And the British put thousands and thousands of opposition leaders in jails. They wanted to gag them, gag the opposition. Somehow hold control over the nation. So his socialist wing, Jay Prakash Narayan's socialist wing played a big job. Subhash Chandra Bose played a major role staying outside the country. He had left the country. He had built an Indian National Army at Singapore. Indian National Army. He had joined hands with Hitler. On the other side, he had joined hands with the with Japan. Japan, Germany and Italy, they were the Axis forces in the Second World War. Germany, Japan and Italy and Subhash Chandra Bose joined hands with them against the British. Very interesting situation. From outside the country too, there was a major threat to the British. That we will look into that part later. But this was the situation prevailing when the Quit India movement went on in the country. Students came out of schools, colleges. People resigned their government jobs. They all joined the Quit India movement in the country. And that was almost a death knell of the British here. There's a tremor. They shook. They thought that the end has come. We may not be able to hold our control on this country any longer. Independence may have to be declared. And freedom struggle became all the more prominent in the country. And in 1937, Muslim League was kept out in most of the decisions because that did not correspond to the thinking of the rest of the country. The Congress thinking and the Muslim League, Congress wanted to keep India together. But this Muslim League was again and again harassing the Congress and asking for settling a separate nation as such. The understanding within the content of their hearts was visible. It was clear. They were planning for a separate nation. So that was a poor term. Muslim League, even when the Quit India movement took place in the country, trying to thwart any attempt by the British to hold on to power, the Muslim League did not participate. Muslim League remained separate. They did not join the Quit India movement. They did not join hands with Mahatma Gandhi ji. That is where the crack started widening between the Congress and the Muslim League. The Congress walked out of the government in 1939. 1939, Congress walked out of the government. It was not there in the cabinet then. They came out opposing the unilateral division, decision of the Viceroy. World War had started 1939 to 1945. 1939 to 1945. When 
Viceroy took the decision, extreme decision of making India a part of the Second World War, join, making India join hands with the British. Gandhiji could not agree to that and the Congress walked out of the comment. So in the World War II, Gandhiji was not prepared to join hands with the British. Muslim League proposed the division of India. Openly they came out. We want India to be divided. So here let's stop and continue with what happened at the 11th hour. What were the root turns that happened? How did India divide into two? How did it affect India and Pakistan both? What made the British take the extreme decision of giving independence to India? All this we will discuss in our next video. Thank you.